white boy is back. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another segment of In the Middle. I am joined here by some people who have some words about the video <laughs> that we've seen on Vice. Not too long. Was it yesterday? It doesn't really matter. Yesterday. Yesterday! Um, there was a video on Vice about a white young man that goes to Morehouse. <laughs> What's that called to call him something else? No. 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 A Caucasian. <laughs> Caucasoid. Okay, a colonizer was on campus, colonized oh, the fuck out of Morehouse. He attends. He attends. He attends. He pays tuition. So yeah. You know. So Vice Land thought it was important for them to include this in their dialogue, um, a part of their brand or whatever, and part of their minority report. Apparently, mm -hmm. Morehouse approved it, <coughs> and a lot of people are concerned. Why would we give this much time to someone um, like this? This minority? Would we consider him a minority? <laughs> He's a minority. He's in a black space that he's. he's we're gonna get into that. We're, yeah, we're, 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 we're gonna get into all. Okay. We're gonna get into, we're gonna into every bit of this. So, when you first saw it, because we watched it together again, some people felt that they didn't want to. Some people went off of tweets and conversations and stuff from friends. I know they wanted to. Yeah. yeah, but we watched it. I did not want to. So, what was our general reaction when we even saw the title? Uh, White colonizer. Well, that's not the title. Yeah, <laughs> a colonizer on campus. That sounds like a. Um, Fucking, um, let's go that way. A Jordan Peele film. Yeah, it was yeah. Just, I was on campus. That's what it sounds like. So, how did you feel to tell when you first seen that? Uh, I felt. So you took a Twitter break. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, you didn't really see too much. Yeah, I, did, I feel like I, I took the perfect moment to right. delete my Twitter. <laughs> um, because I just felt like. Absolutely disgusted. Oh my God. I, 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 I use that word. I, I just felt absolutely. It was disgust. Maybe that's the. That, maybe that's the feeling. Yeah. Maybe the feeling will change a little bit to something more precise. It but right now, it's just. Yeah, it won't. It's disgust. It's appalled. It's it's flabbergasted. Yep. <laughs> what, what about you, um, Deshaun? <laughs> Not this deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Um. So the first reaction. Yep. So we all have seen the video of Miss Bridget from I Love. Mm -hmm. um, our favorite love, mm -hmm. where she's just. <laughs> Stop. Sorry, <laughs> that's my reaction because, like, I didn't, I didn't see the video before I saw tweets. I saw one of my brothers who just graduated from our house tweet about some documentary that had come out, and I'm like, "What yeah. documentary are you talking about? Like, what, ha what happened?" And he was like, "I'm too embarrassed to even put him in the timeline," so he gave it to me. <laughs> Damn, it was that embarrassing. That embarrassing. I watched the first two minutes of it, and I heard him say, I belong here as long as I do the work. <laughs> Does he want to do the work today? <sighs> He's about to he don't work. really want to get the work today. I, had to, I was like, I'm not watching the rest of this yeah, until we just watched a few minutes ago because absolutely not. Yeah. Why we did didn't watch the video in full. What about you, Clarissa? So, I feel like we actually knew about this during the semester. Knew about the documentary being yes. filmed on campus? Yes, we so, did. I, so, I we, so we did hear about this during the semester because we heard folks like seeing him being filmed um, and things like that. So I wasn't too surprised that it came out. I think my concern was when I did watch the three minutes that I did initially, even though we did finish all of it. Um, it just felt like a joke. Um, it felt like he was kind of just talking out of his ass. Um, and it felt mainly, as Vice does, um, yeah. using these narratives to make to, to like produce this white sympathy that like I don't give a fuck about and that is useless in the conversation about HBCUs because like there's more shit going on mm -hmm. um, and so when I when I tweeted about this being the most embarrassing thing that Morris College has ever done um, I meant that and like Morris College also like protects rapist and like it's trash in general so like this is really top tier level of garbage and I think I what is the, what is his name uh, Tiago and I think I lied um, because I. Uh, it wasn't discussed. The first thing I felt wasn't discussed. It wasn't. It wasn't appalled. It wasn't flabbergasted. I was generally when I first saw. It, I felt like I was just generally uninterested. <laughs> yes. I think that's the first yeah. feeling I felt. Yes. Um, now I feel disgust, and I feel all those other feelings. But when I first saw it, when it first came across my timeline, um, I was like, 
I'm a child white with whiteness. And right. That's like that's just like how I always feel. Like whiteness, yeah. it, yeah, it was like a colonizer being a colonizer. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, no shocker. So so I put the first react my first reaction was ambivalence and, and, and disinterest. Mm-hmm. Right. Disinterest. And I think maybe my feelings about the video changed when his little friends were in my mentions. Um, just like camping for him, really. These like, are people that go to Morehouse? Yeah, so actually like ABC students, like Clark students, Spelman students, Morehouse students, were really in my mentions being like, well, you're discriminating against him um, because Tiago did come to um, an ABC shut it down meeting last year um, <laughs> and we told him not to come back, which honestly... Was a collective decision? Or? Yeah, like everyone who's been in ABC shut it down for a minute, like we all collectively decided. And can Tiago... You tell, can you tell us what, can you tell you what, what is the purpose of um, AUC shut down? Yeah, so ABC shut it down is a student um, organization on campus and the AUC that works around black liberation um, and specifically fighting against police violence, sexual violence, um, and a host of other issues. Okay. But he came to our general body meeting at the beginning of last year um, and a member told him not to return and he understood it. Okay. So I think my my biggest issue with the responses was like, Tiago understood that it was a black only space. You know, mm. like why, why are his friends camping? So like why are they like, he seems to understand like, okay, I don't need to be in every space. Um, clearly not if you see but like he get he's got a taste of sense. Um, but the student response, just like hearing people like really going up for him and really not understanding why we're not accepting this white man in our space has like been the most disappointing part because like not saying I expect black folks to all be on the same page, but I I want black folks to want better for themselves mm-hmm. and seeing them not is heartbreaking. You are breathing hard. Do you have you when you do mention earlier that you have some type of you've met him before? Okay, yeah. So I was a I'm a TA at Morehouse, um, and I TA for a, a class that Tiago was in. So a part of that TA position, I lectured before, um, graded a couple of tests, directly TA things, and I've had to kind of lecture in front of or teach Tiago. Um, I've greeted Tiago on several occasions. Tiago knows who I am. Me and Tiago have had several um, personal conversations. Um, and so I've always been very, I've always been very, very certain and very, very intentional about the ways in which I wanted to engage him mm-hmm. because I wanted to make sure that every time I engaged him, I was underlying, underlining his whiteness. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember one time I was I was going somewhere and generally at Morehouse how I greet people or sometimes I greet people at Morehouse I'd be like hey what's up black man and when I saw him I told him hey what's up white man and like the people I was with was like oh shit like, he said that I was like yeah because I want Tiago to be very 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 aware of his whiteness and what whiteness does to space right. and specifically whiteness is history in black space well, he's not completely white, is he? That's the question that I'm asking. Are you? Yes. Well, what, yeah. what, what, what was... Yeah. Someone referred on Twitter said he was a spicy white, so I'm okay. trying to clarify. Spicy, spicy, spicy white, spicy white, spicy spicy white, white. meaning like he's Spanish. Habaneros or something? <laughs> so like he's Spanish, he's from Miami, right? Yeah. So like he is not white in the sense of like... You like... British, European mm-hmm. ancestry or Scottish or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like he like has like Spanish... Iberian okay. ancestry lineage. Um, but that doesn't mean he's not white. That doesn't mean he's not white, <laughs> right? That doesn't mean he doesn't walk through. Surface through. racial analysis understands that. Right. Okay. And also, I think we have to like center the fact like Morehouse has had white students before him. True. As the video so, said. Right. So it's and not so, like, specifically about... It's really not... A, this, this video and this conversation really isn't about Tiago. No. It's about Morehouse and it's about Vice and it's about the fact that like this video more or less was about them being in this like mutual relationship of trying to get to mm-hmm. another place. Like Morehouse has, Morehouse is always trying to get as close to whiteness as fucking possible because they need it, right? And they say in the video, right? Like this isn't about white people, this is about money. Right, mm-hmm. we really don't care about well, what Morehouse else. people, well this Morehouse administrator saying this? Or? Yeah, so, so, so Dana Phillips in the video says that this is about tuition and money and yeah, this is an economic strategy. Right, this isn't really about mm-hmm. anything other than that. Um, and that's not shocking because we've seen that with Morehouse. We've, mm-hmm. we've seen them align themselves with Chick Fil A. We've seen them align themselves with um, being a part of and Spelman, 
because Velma doesn't get out of this either, um, of aligning himself with whiteness, <laughs> Chick fil A. Exactly. <laughs> White. What's that future fund in general um, in the ways that they are playing a part in gentrifying the West End? Absolutely. So this isn't new, this isn't shocking, but it definitely was disappointing to see Morehouse show its ass on a new level. I think. That's what I'm talking about. I am. So I think for me, I am. I'm playing back the last three, four years I've been at Morehouse and the work that I've done there, the work that I've done with my friends like Clarissa and Jordan and a host of others. Um, And it makes me like, it's almost like a slap in the face Mm -hmm. to witness Morehouse Greenlight, a documentary about a white boy and his experience in a supposed black space. Supposed. In a supposed black space. Because right. uh, that's up for conversation. That's up for conversation. Up for conversation. And, and, and we can have that conversation. But like for, for them to like green light his, like the, allow them to record this video in this space when they have actively like ignored and countered um, narratives around sexual violence, yep. around gender violence on campus, around trans and queer antagonism. Like, we, like, there has, every time there is something that goes public in regards to these issues, Morehouse always does something in the media that, like, that counters that, as if to say, like, well, our students are saying this, but we really don't know what they're talking about because we are doing this, 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 and this. Right. But here you have, like, we still have these, like, a host of issues at Morehouse. And instead of broadcasting those and working through those and really like dealing with those issues, Morehouse instead greenlights a video about a white student and his feelings about being in a black space, even going as far as to call him a minority. As if that word, even though I hate the word and most folks who have like a a generally good analysis on on race hate the word, we still know that it's a very racialized term. Mm -hmm. And so to use that and like as a as a way to victimize him in this space, I thought it was irresponsible and dangerous. intellectually lazy. Yeah, and it's yeah. dangerous, right? Like, like yeah. there is there is no space that a white person can go into in America Literally. that allows them to be a minority. I don't care how black the space is, how brown the space is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just think that the whole narrative, by and large, is irresponsible, and it's a lie. Like they say that you know that. Um, Morehouse, or or that for years you couldn't find HBC or white students at HBCUs. That's not true. When that's not true. Yeah, I read up on said that um, TSU has a lot of white students. Right, and that's There's not There's two true. HBCUs that right. are majority white. <laughs> They said TSU was right. Wrong. And it so is. Morehouse had um, a white valedictorian, I could be wrong, I'm going to say 2012. Yes, at least 2012, um, there was a white valedictorian my freshman year. There was a white guy who was an IOTA that attended. Hold on, your freshman year at work? At Spelman. They y'all had a white? No, 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 no. At Spelman, like at Morehouse, Mor- okay. at Morehouse, there was a white man who was, who was an IOTA. And even in my freshman class at Spelman, we have two white girls in our class as well. Um, so this isn't new, this isn't shocking, it's just more disappointing to see that our schools care more about whiteness than they do about us. You think, they, you think that maybe they just want more funding and trying to make sure they're staying? Because well, you're seeing so many HBCUs yeah. closed because of lack of funding and all that. Do you think this is the right way to get more money? No. So, so I think that like having these conversations does get sort of nuanced or like we, we have to grade it a little bit when we have the conversation, because of course it is about money, it is about the fact that um, HBCUs are terribly underfunded as right. it is, but on top of that, Morehouse is private. So right. we get in, like we can get to the conversation about funding, about how hard it is mm-hmm. to maintain a space right. like that, which is why Morehouse has increased its um, acceptance in the last two or three years. Right. Like That's why you go from accepting only 400, 500 students to almost 700 students each year. Like right. We understand that, we understand like the need to pull in money. What I don't understand is the need to center whiteness, to center non-blackness in this space, in a space that was built and created supposedly to protect and to nourish blackness, right? Like, so my frustration with it is that Morehouse, Morehouse aesthetically is a black space. Mm-hmm. We can talk about how, how, how 
you allow Dan Cathy, the CEO of Chick-fil-A, which is anti-black and is anti-queer, right. on your board of trustees. That's a conversation to be right. had. We can talk about how most of the funding comes from rich white men. That's a conversation right. that can be had. Historically. But historic, right. And still, and still well. does. Correct, and still does. But aesthetically, culturally, it is a black space, mm -hmm. right? And so when you, like, when you go and center things that are non-black, what you are essentially saying to me is that your blackness makes up this space, but it is not enough, and we do not care about it. Mm. So and what... What do you say about the like the, the when, I, when I've been watching it, you're seeing these he has black roommates this and that they don't have a problem with it. Right. Do you all think you might need to get a chance? I don't think they're young. young. But I think, I don't think it's because they're young. I also wanna I also wanna continue how much whiteness exists in at Morehouse, right? Like right. so right. Morehouse economically is a is a white space and and, and has institutionally. It, via institutionalization, right, mm -hmm. has become very white. But pedagogically, mm -hmm. Morehouse is a white space. Right. Um, I'm, I'm an English it's major. So, yeah, right. it's right. teachings are extremely white. So I'm an English major, and, and I had to take a course, and I had to choose between a single author course, and I had to choose between Milton and Shakespeare, or Milton and, 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 and Canterbury Tales, and all these other things. Like, and that's understood because when you're existing, when you're using, when you're a black person, you're going to a certain specific field, you have to understand that whiteness is kind of permeating that field. Right. But there's also no, you know, single author course at Morehouse for a black person. Right. There's no Morrison course. There's no Baldwin course. There's no Hughes course. There's and these people's right. These people's uh, archives are large enough and extensive enough. Right. They, their work is, is is robust enough to engage them by themselves. Right. It is even very and generally I mean, theologically white. Yeah, and, and even, very theologically white for a long time. And even adding like Spellman into this, because I feel like Spellman will think they're out the loop on this. Um, Spellman, while they are like, are, as, a, as a CWS major, we do have a feminist theory class that is focused solely on black feminist writers. Mm -hmm. Spellman also invites Rahm Emanuel on campus. <laughs> right? right? So like, we're reading black text, but we're also allowing like, one of the worst mayors of Chicago, who is literally allowing cop academies to kill black children on campus and promoting this event as like recruitment to work for him right so like in what like again aesthetically Spellman and Morehouse are black but in reality when you get into the practice of like what they're actually doing on the day to day it is not black right and so I think that like just going back because this like that's how deeply upset I am like going back to the many many things we've done over the last three, four years in, in these spaces, like, after we disrupted Hillary Clinton, not even after, during the disruption of Hillary Clinton, um, so AU shut it down, there was none of us who disrupted Hillary Clinton back in 2015, of October, she came to the AUC to claim the black vote, to claim the HBC <laughs> vote, to claim Morehouse and Spellman's vote, um, and so nine of us, all of us were students from Morehouse and Spellman, one Clark student, um, we went and disrupted Hillary Clinton, and during that disruption, you had Morehouse's now previous president mm -hmm. go up and like physically touch them on our backs like no Hillary's our friend she's right. our friend don't right. disrupt her don't disrupt <laughs> right. her and you John have, Lewis you have, uh, yeah you have John Lewis you have Kasim Reed you have all these like black folks who, who have a particular a specific history right. with Atlanta organizing with, with Atlanta black institutions and they're telling us like no, sit the fuck down. Like we're here to protect Hillary. We need this money. We need right. this money. Right. You're up my chest. So like moving from there, we move forward, and and more and AUC shut down becomes more vocal about sexual violence on campus. And you have you have head head of communications at Morehouse who tells you, well, instead of like instead of doing protests, how about we create this web campaign? We invite celebrities in, right. and they can talk about how much Morehouse is doing to protect survivors, right? right. And it's like. Well, no, sis, Kathy. Let's and let's instead build a task force that actually combats these issues before we start talking about celebrities and web web campaigns and shit like that. So then you fast forward, right? And like now we're doing we're doing more work. We have task force, but the task force is is not very active. And I'm right. not going to talk too much about it because I signed a non disclosure. But like, but like you have you have this task force. You build these you build these issues, right? Like you are you build these these ways to combat these right. issues, right. yeah. And instead of them being recognized by the campus, by the school, it's like you like they tap on all these black organizers to do all these things for them and don't utilize it and instead demonize demonize us. And so then you even go as far as to more most recently where MTVU tapped me to do a um a, a recording on Title Nine for them. Mm -hmm. And what is Title Nine? 
So Title Nine is I, I wish Michaela was in the video. Title Nine is a is a no. I can explain. I just made that like she right. is good at right. She's the queen of Nine. Right. She's the queen of Nine. Right. Uh, so Michaela Title Nine is, is like a, a collective of, of laws that is built in to protect survivors of sexual violence, as well as like um, folks who are undocumented, folks who are uh, who otherwise are like non traditional in, um, in student spaces. And so, um, and so, like that's what Title Nine is, and that's what the video was about. My video was what specifically was about um, how students can combat like bad policy on campus around Title Nine. So, um, the directors from MTV were like reaching out to Morehouse and Spellman for weeks, no and never got any responses from them. And and they said my name specifically, and I know for a fact that. My name has been sent around in in Governor Morehouse's emails, and they yes, and they know who I am. Like they know exactly, they know my name when they see it. You're the shit card. I'm one of them of many. There's a collection of them. Right, a collection. So, for, so for it to get for You're it to get working. to like for for them to not respond, for me to have to record um, on property that would be considered CAUs, even though it is public. For me to have to record on that property and not on my own campus because I'm talking about Title IX and because I've been vocal on campus, mm -hmm. and for them to like allow this white student to be on campus in in one of the most historical colleges on or black colleges colleges on um, U.S. territory, right? Yeah. <laughs> in one of the most historic buildings on Morehouse's campus, I think it's just like a complete slap in the face. It says to me that. They don't give a fuck about black students, about right. black queer students, about black queer survivors right. as much as they care about these cis and white men and what and and the value that is attached to that. Like the the economy of whiteness, not just like like it's in terms of money, but in terms of like the value that comes with whiteness. Right. And and Morehouse protects that. Morehouse allows that. And I and I want to get to that. I, I really want to get to that. That that <laughs> the social cachet of whiteness, like. People, at least from what I've understood to be the discourse concerning Twitter right now, black Twitter specifically and black, black a AUC Twitter, to be specific, <laughs> um, there's just been this a lot of confusion concerning space and and, and and what is why is it so important that this space is black and what is it why is Tiago such an affront to the space? Right. And I think that we have to be very clear that. Black people in space and black bodies in space is a historically and a discursively right. is serious thing. Like right. black people have always been since the Atlantic has always been a geography list, geography searching type of a community, right. and we have always had to, or we've always been forced to create space and do some a sort of black map making for ourselves in order to exist. Um, and survive, right? So we have maroon societies, and we have ballroom culture, and we have uh, all these different types of uh, silos where in which black people get to exist as as more close to humanness mm -hmm. um, because they cannot in the overarching society in the overarching social order that is America. So when we put black people in conversation with space in that way, and then you throw in a white body when we know that whiteness has already territorialized everything, right? Like, every space is already a white space because right. whiteness has already colonized the West, right? right? Whiteness is the assumed body to occupy any space. Um, spaces are, lit are literally planned Historically, spaces were literally planned around the the anthropometrics of white bodies. Anthropometrics, and yeah, the anthropometrics of white bodies mean like the literal measurement of a human body. Those right. bodies, when, mm -hmm. when we think about the way in which uh, architecture is made, mm -hmm. the history of that comes from Europe and European bodies being the center of any space. And now we get to the West, where literally the idea of spatiality, the idea of Terrain and geography itself is rooted in, in the West in, in a white body. So it's important that black people create space. And when white people come into those black spaces, it's almost a resurgence of the history of whiteness creating an already territorializing what is this idea called space and yeah. time itself. Mm -hmm. And so I did before I did want to speak a little bit on the journalist himself. 
who did a terrible job. Um, <laughs> oh, and I mean no. that in like the most explicit way possible. Do you so his name? no, because he's not important <laughs> and his ways are trash. journalists, journalists to journalists, I think it's important that when we're trying to do the work of minorities, right, whatever, for you to center reverse racism and to question black students um, and to ask them like, oh, no, I need like a serious answer, right? Like you are you are giving space to systems that are already here. Um, and it's a disrespect as a black journalist to be at an HBCU and even use the word reverse racism, right? And I know probably like working at Vice is what you have to do, nice. but... It is such an affront to like the work of black journalists to sit there and ask a scholar about reverse racism for a white boy.